Welcome everybody back here on Siegel Talks at the Martin Siegel Theater Center, the Graduate Center, CUNY in Manhattan in New York City at the City University. And it's another day on planet Earth, another day with the COVID virus, another day where the world is wondering uh, what it will be happening, what is happening. We don't have all the full information. All we know that yesterday, a Wednesday, there were 39,000 new infections in the United States, the highest ever recorded since the pandemic started. The European Union are thinking for next week, Wednesday, to uh, uh, loosen travel restrictions. And it looks like the United States will not be uh, able to send its citizens to Europe. Uh, Americans will be barred, most probably. It's a shocking, shocking uh, development. Um, it joins uh, Brazil and Russia. Um, very early on, I think Trump overnight decided without talking to anybody that Europeans shouldn't come in when America had um, very little, a thousand infections and, uh, and I think uh, whatever, 50 people who died from it and uh, Europeans were very unhappy about this. Now Europe seems to have done very, very well. Meanwhile, in America, over 2 million infections, the hotspot of the world, disastrous handling um, of the situation. A president that refuses to wear a mask tells people they should inject disinfectant, flees in a bunker uh, when there seems to be a problem, uh, has police clear with tear gas, peaceful protesters to make a photo up with a Bible. And he threatened and did use military, to use military against the American people. It's unprecedented. It's, it's shocking uh, using military tactics from Iraq war with helicopters flying over protesters and the outrage we have all share about the death of George Floyd. Um, uh, of course, intensified everything that's so wrong um, in this country and what needs to be changed and um, uh, we all hope that theater is a part of it. Artists have been on the right side of the struggle, of the complex struggle for, for freedom and liberties. They've been the right side of history and um, they always are able to experience the present, the moment better and often anticipate the future as once here say that's what artists do. And sometimes when traditional arts, great arts like theater come together with new technology, innovation, happens. This has been the history of the arts when film came up, when Louis Fuller, the dancer, invented new lighting systems for her dancers. She held 45 patterns in 1890. And now we have Zoom, we have Twitter, we have Instagram, Tech Talk, and digital revolution that goes so much faster than the revolution on Battle Breaks time. And all of a sudden, airplanes, cars, radios, film cameras, projections came up and completely changed how we experience the world and perhaps what we experience and now and the velocity of it is much deeper but we are so close we can see it and this virus now exposes everything the structures like an x-ray we see what's wrong as Shekna said it's a Fukushima type uh, disaster but the roof is open we look on it with horror and uh, we now know we have to change something we have to change ourselves we need to authentically uh, create a change if we want to see the change, but we also all have to work to get out and to do and take actions. Um, we have been talking now for 13 weeks with theater artists from around the world. We are the only US and most probably also in Europe institution that does programming every day, a new programming as a theater institution related to the corona, coronavirus, talking to artists. We most probably the only uh, uh, profession, theater and performance, that now has an overview for three months uh, about what's happening globally, how, what, uh, uh, this, how this virus affects our lives. It's a documenting and archiving the present and to normally others choose uh, what's been archived or not. We said, no, we are important. We are, make a great contribution. And we talk to so many people, whether it's South Africa and, uh, and uh, Hong Kong and, uh, 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 Tunisia, Cuba, how uh, theater artists have been always part of change and highlighted in a symbolic way, an imaginative way, but also in a real way. Um, this week we focus a little bit on a part of the world that uh, often is not talked about, not talked about enough. Um, it is the Caribbean. Uh, we have Spanish speaking uh, 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 Caribbeans that uh, we did a festival last year. It, uh, 
the Siegel Center with uh, the help of the French Cultural Services and the great Stephanie Berard, who put it together. We are also publishing a book um, that Daniele was on with us from Martinique, Daniele Francesca was with us on Tuesday, a fantastic uh, look into her world and what she is thinking. And Paul was the one uh, who directed uh, 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 her work. Paul Price was so generous, say, of course I come and help you guys out and direct her play The She-Devil. Next week, we will have actually two Jamaican uh, 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 theater artists uh, from the Caribbean English uh, speaking. And, and, and Paul was the one who uh, uh, came and talked a lot also about his work, about uh, uh, how it is, what it is to be someone from Trinidad to uh, Tobago, to be living in Brooklyn, to be an actor, uh, a filmmaker. He teaches acting. Um, actually, as a colleague from me in Brooklyn College, we are at City University and also at HB Studio. Uh, he has this MFA in acting from Yale Drama, and he's a successful uh, filmmaker who developed at Sundance Lab his film The Deliverer, which won awards. And also he was at Marvel's Jessica Jones on Netflix. Well, this is uh, quite something. And um, uh, so we're going to hear a bit now from Paul. Paul, um, thank you for joining us. Um, thank you for having me. Where are you at the moment and how, how is life with Corona for you? <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm holed up in my, my apartment in, uh, in, in uh, Brooklyn in Park Slope. And um, I've been here for, you know, like everybody else in New York for, for like up to three months. I mean, now we're only just starting to emerge out of our, our hovels and, and making going out into the streets and, and um, engaging with the world again but it's been um quite um quite quite a few months uh, in 2020 and it's and it's at least certainly for me it's been a time of deep reflection you know i think um even before um the assassination of of george floyd and and black lives matter before before that happened, just just that that incubation period of being in in uh, holed up in our in our in our apartments was really a, it, it. I think it, it was a moment to, to 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 reflect and to kind of reassess exactly. Certainly for me, like what 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 am I what am I what am I doing? <laughs> what am I saying? What 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 is it? What's my philosophy on the work? And where do I want my work to go? You know, I think as as um, and, then, and then compounded with the, this next pandemic, so to speak, we're sort of in a, in a double pandemic as it's been uh, called now. Um, I think the confluence of those two things, certainly for me, has really forced me to really re-examine everything that I thought I knew um, and exactly what is it my work really stands for. I think sometimes when you get in, when you're in this business, the entertainment business. Um, you could get into certain tracks, right? And, and New York has this particular energy that you just are, are driven by the energy of the city and, and the demands of so many people as, as an actor and director. And, you know, you're, you're, you're trying to get to the next level and uh, advance your career. But then um, the reason why for what you do often or can get lost in the mix. And I think what the... The, the coronavirus has done and, 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 and of course what the protest, the Black Lives Matter protest has ignited is the sense of, of um, realignment um, and an interrogation as to what, what are we really doing and, and what do we really want to say with our work, certainly as theater artists, as filmmakers. And I think for me that has really um, caused me for, you know, to, to, to really um, reflect and to rethink everything that I thought I knew. And, you know, you're kind of going through um, your education, your work, and then, um, then you start to question um, even your own prejudices, your own biases, your own uh, inclinations. And, and, and then now it's questioning why. Why do I feel this way? Why, do I, why am I doing this as opposed to that? Um, and for me, that's kind of been um, what these last few months have, have done. And I think... Um, I was listening to John, Jonathan McQuarrie and one of your other uh, Siegel talks, and, and he said a really, really fascinating thing about the breath, the breath, and I, and I totally agree with that. It's, it's really, what is the spiritual alignment? You know, spiritually, what are you contributing to the world that's really moving, 
moving the needle in in the necessary direction and i think that's going to impact positively everybody else rather than just kind of going with the flow so that's kind of where my head is at and where where i've been um um thinking about mm -hmm. you know yeah and i mean um as we talked a little bit earlier it's it's this we're, we're in this moment where I'm part of this National Alliance for Acting Teachers. And this, it's this amazing forum of some of the, the leaders in, of, in the profession, in the theater profession. And we've, we've been having these, these talks in these salons discussing um, the curriculum of what are we teaching as, 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 as teachers, as, as acting teachers to um, the incoming class classes. And, and I think the students are demanding um, from us as 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 um, as professors, um, more more of, of 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 their teachers and of their faculty, and I think it's incumbent on us to to really question again uh, our curriculum, our sources, and challenging us certainly some of the some of the older teachers and the older heads, right? Of of um, what do we teach? And how do we teach those things? And, I, and that, that, has, that has been a really interesting conversation to be a part of because it's really, it's, it's triggering, right? It's triggering as to, because we teach, I think teachers teach from what, they, what they've been taught and, and how they've been taught and, they, and, it's, and it's passed down, right? Teaching is in many ways, it's a, it's a craft. It's a, it's a, um, um, it's a, you know, a craft that's passed down um, in, in many ways. So, it's it's it, it's it's scary for I think um, a lot of us in the profession, um, certainly the older teachers I think, um, older white teachers more specifically, in terms of of um, reinvestigating and, and and approaching work and bringing work into the space that is non traditional, right? And being okay with not knowing. And I think that's the thing. And I, I think this period is calling on on us to be co creators. In, in the in the in the teaching space with our students and not coming from a the hierarchical point of view of being the authority on on the on the work and and being able to to co-create with our students um, um, and and yeah and, and apply that the same tenets of any sort of rigorous study right mm -hmm. even if it's it's just going into a, a culture into a, um, a writer we're not familiar with because, and I think sometimes the, 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 the assumption is because I'm black, I'm a black man, I know everything there is about blackness, but I don't know anything about 1930 Memphis, you know, in Memphis, the same way you wouldn't know, <laughs> do you know? Or, mm -hmm. or, even, or even in Trinidad in the 1900s, like, I, I don't know. Um, but so I think if we could acknowledge that and recognize that, and not make those assumptions, we could enter that, that space, that world. And once we enter that world with curiosity, with interest, and with the same respect, and, and do the work with students to investigate that, I think it's an enriching experience for, for, for us all. So I'm really excited and really, really, really jazzed about um, what is happening and the conversations that are happening um, in in the various fields that I, I kind of intersect, whether it's on the, on, the, on, the, on the teaching side or as a filmmaker or as an actor, writer, um, it's really, um, really illuminating. Do you feel it, something will change? Is it a real moment of change? I think so. I think, I think it's incumbent, incumbent on us. I think the pressure is, is, is different. It's real this time. I think, I mean, it's always been real. Um, I think um, I think the sustainability of it is incumbent on all of us. I think it's in, it's incumbent on all of us, and we've seen within the last few years the needle um, change, right? Um, the, the kinds of conversations in the political landscape that that we didn't dare to have um, a few years ago are common, are standard practice now. Whether it's Medicare, Medicare for all. Um, you know, the question of reparations is, is back in the conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and these are things that would be unheard of to even bring up. Um, so I think there is a, a movement that's happening and it seems to be, you know, you know, time has these cyclical 
these these blocks that seem to be 10, 15 year spans, but it feels like now we're we're having these seismic changes in our um, our, our we're having a growth spurt, so to speak. That every five years, that there, there seems to be something radical, like the the you know. It, it just makes me think of the, the election of Barack Obama in 2008 seems like a whole other time. <laughs> that, yeah. that seems like a, like 100 years ago mm. compared to the conversation where we are now. Yeah, um, we're hearing the New York sirens, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. You, oh, you yeah. don't know. Is it a police? Is it an ambulance? Someone I mean, dying? You it's, know? Someone yeah, getting it's, beaten up? We don't know, right? Uh, it's 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 frightening, Frank. I mean, it's it's that's I mean, New York, you've always had these sounds of, of you know, these these traditional but now it's helicopters overhead sirens whether it's the police or the ambulance it's it's really like are we living in like where are we living <laughs> like yeah. this is this is supposed to be america the land of the of democracy and freedom but but i think all of that is being revealed for what it what it has always been yeah um, yeah yeah it's always been like this but we didn't want to see, or we weren't able, especializing of people like me and others of the white population. You know, we are in the minority anyway. More, more people with diverse backgrounds than than ours. You know, live in New York, but it hasn't been reflected on stage. It's been reflected yeah. in leadership. It hasn't been inflected. But how did you, as a person, how did you do? You were three months. You were at home. Um, you live with friends or family. How how did you, as a human, how did you? How was that for you? What well, happened? You know, I, I was fortunate enough to be at 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 at, um, at home, and and um, it was um, uh, an interesting period. I mean, for me, what what I did was I'm working on my on my my screenplay. So this is a project that um, is is we're we're shooting this in Trinidad, and we're supposed to shoot this year um, in in May. And obviously, once the the pandemic hit that got immediately postponed to, to next year. So for me, initially, I just used that time creatively to go into rewrites and to really delve into- And you could do it right away. You say, I can write now or- Yeah, I mean, I, I, for me, I was, I, I was able to, because initially I, I thought, okay, this would not, I, I'm just thinking back to like early, um, early March, just before this was happening, I said, okay, I'm going to do my rewriting, not anticipating the sort of running death toll that, that um, we're experiencing in the middle of. So as I was going through it, um, I thought, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use this time, this creative time, because you, when you're in production for a film, there's never enough time. You're always, there's mm -hmm. always um, something to do. So I was like, okay, I'll lose this time to, to rework my script, work with my team, to reschedule for for um, for next year, but as things started to unfold and the news started to to roll out, um, I, I started to become not so much fearful for me, but I started to really think about the world in which we're in because I am I am fortunate enough. I have I have a great apartment. I live in a great area. I'm safe. I could get Amazon to deliver my food. But then I started looking at the news and looking at the lines of people waiting to get food, people losing their jobs, um, and then the disproportionate amount of, 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 um, of, of black and brown people dying from this disease needlessly at that. Do you know, so that during that time, it, it really that was a, a, a moment to really um, reflect on that. Um, and, you know, I've, you know I, I mean, I would classify myself as progressive. So those are some of the, those issues that have always been something that I've always been mindful of and, and um, feel passionately about. But then when you see it unfold in America on, on television, the way it did, it, it, really, it really struck a chord, do you know? And I, and I think, as as the as those three months um, forged on, I started to get really um, really mindful of my own privilege. Do you know my own my own access? Um, and it, it, it's funny because you know you 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 are um, in a space that um, you are dealing with with discrimination on so many different levels. But then 
I think it's also important to acknowledge where you know you do have you do have access you know and then that that makes me think a lot of my some of my colleagues and some of the artists back in Trinidad that may not have some of the access and the things that that um that I may 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 have and that that also gave me the thought of okay well how am I bridging that gap how am I connecting um colleagues from the space where I'm from um to 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 access some of the things that are that are happening here so I mean it was really this this mix of considering what is actually unfolding um in the United States in here what's what's my response to that and then what's my how do I how do I take action in response to that I think my first instinct was one is just getting realigned just spiritually um mentally questioning and rereading and and um thinking about what is the kind of work that I want to do um and which for me has been just recentering the caribbean narrative and in, in 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 the work that I'm inspired to 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 tell um and and then how do I now create the bridges and create the the linkages with my community you know which I've been doing before but I think that that I think has has just reemerged as a as a prior priority for me and something that I'm that I'm interested in doing more and more so, and I and I and I thank you for for that for the um, for the theater experience uh, for the 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 series of shorts last year with the the French Caribbean theater which is such a rare thing in the city um and I think speaks again to this 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 moment where what gets space what gets um uplifted what gets centered in in the conversation and um and um and it, and it was really really inspiring for me to be a part of something like that that really centered a place that I'm from um and to engage in the in the conversation with with uh with the New York public yeah. so <clears throat> and it was incredible to learn even for us we were not aware it was the first time ever in yeah we one wants to say the history of theater that Caribbean plays were presented in some kind of a festival. It's fascinating, right? How Isn't shocking that, is it's unthinkable. It's unthink it, and, and, and to think that um, that in that New York City has probably one of the largest um, West Indian populations outside of the Caribbean. Yeah, is or is in New York, so or Paris, you know, such a big it's, yeah it's big city where theater is so prominent and significant and plays such a role. Um, so uh, tell us a little bit, how did you come to make Cedar? Where did you grow up and yeah. uh, um, how yeah. was that experience? Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I was born and raised in Trinidad and Tobago. And um, my parents, my mother is from Martinique. From and, Martinique, okay. Yeah, it's from Martinique. And, and my dad um, was from Jamaica. He passed away when I was really young. And, I'm sorry to but, hear that. No, that's the story by a while ago. Um, and my sister is from Barbados. So I'm really this pan Caribbean uh, uh, a person I like to think of myself as. Um, and I, I, you know, growing up in Trinidad, I wasn't so much involved in the performing arts so much. Um, I was very much into sports. I used to swim a lot. And, but I came to New York. Um, and I discovered a theater at HP Studio. I initially came here, I was in fashion, I was doing some modeling and stuff in Paris and New York. And while in New York, I came across uh, this acting studio, which I, I adored. And, and I knew that was where my life was going to go. Um, just mm -hmm. because it was the first time I had discovered a medium that allowed me to express something that I wanted to say. And before that, I was very, and I'm still very close to um, there's an artist in Trinidad called Peter Minchel. He's a carnival artist um, uh, and also. What does theater. it mean? Carnival artist means carnival. It's carnival is the the main. It's like the street parade and street parade in Trinidad. The carnival. So it's it's a com. It's basically opera in the streets. So mm -hmm. it's it's design. It's, it's these massive costumes, music, um, theater. And it's it's all thousands and thousands of people that that parade through the streets, like in Brazil or in Venice, and that sort of thing. It happens around the, the same time. And Trinidad is one of the one of the largest carnivals in the world. So 
Peter Minchel is one of the foremost uh, carnival artists um, in Trinidad, and he's been a mentor of mine for, for many years before becoming an, uh, an actor or a filmmaker on any of, any of those. So once I came to, to, to New York and I discovered HB, I knew New York was the place that I needed to be to pursue theater and to, and to, to learn the craft. And um, I moved here and, and, and studied at HB and, and then started working in, 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 the, in the theater here and then went to Yale for my graduate training in, in theater, which was an, an, an incredible experience um, in terms of the faculty and, and, the, and the, the, the student body. But you're, it's, a, it's a place where you're, you're constantly um, creating, creating work. Um, and once graduating from, from Yale, I, I started a theater company that, that produced um, Caribbean theater in Trinidad. So we would go to Trinidad and we'd bring um, theater practitioners, theater um, directors and designers to Trinidad to work with designers and actors and stuff in, 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 in Trinidad to create these classical, to re reinvestigate these classical Caribbean plays. So, so um, we would do that um, over a number, a couple of years we did that. Um, and then we would have this theater education where we would take um, kids and they would be part of the theater, a theater training program. So they'll get to know a little bit of, on, the, on, the, on the inside of how theater works. And then they'll be part of our crew. So it was a really fantastic program. And then we would take these plays from the center and take them to rural parts of the country to places that ordinarily wouldn't have access to come to Port of Spain to see a performance. So we would, we would essentially tour the piece to rural Trinidad. Um, so that was fascinating. And then um, I came after, after graduate school, being based in New York, really doing the New York scene. Uh, HB asked me to, to teach a course at, uh, at, at HB, which was um, teaching international um, um, uh, uh, English, uh, uh, English for international students, basically. Um, and um, it, that was a fantastic experience because I was an international student and mm -hmm. it, it, it mm -hmm. was about teaching these international actors how do they bring themselves to the work. Because I think that could be something that gets lost as an international person when you come to the U.S. And it speaks to everything that we're we're where we're experiencing now, there's a sense, and you can feel this sense that what you bring isn't enough, that I need to lose my accent, I need to have an American accent, I need to become like something else other than myself, and who I bring is not of value. Um, so a, a lot of, and I, I felt a great affinity to that, to, to the international students, and still do at HB, because I related to that experience, you know, and, um, and a lot of that class was about, no, actually what, what you bring to the table is, is the very thing that makes you different and unique, although it may not appear that way in the interim because that's not what's being reflected back at you. Um, but in my experience, it is the very Caribbean culture and Caribbean-ness and identity that I've explored that has um, brought me some of the most joy and met some of the most interesting and, and, and um, creative partnerships and people in my career so yeah so uh after that i you know i, I started a, i recently started a, a production company film production company that's that's producing um films um and television i'm currently in a lab at big vision empty wallet that's about um a development lab film lab for filmmakers so mm -hmm. my, my my career has been you know a little bit of everything from acting producing filmmaking um and teaching as well. So, it's it's amazing. Um, how, how was the experience for you as a black actor or a black filmmaker in New York? We heard. I don't know if you saw that. Sorry about that. Sorry yeah, about no, that. that's good. That's New York. That's how it is. And people get a slice of it. It is the center of the coronavirus on was, planet yes. on planet Earth here in Brooklyn and. Uh, and uh, yeah. anyway, so now the question is, um, I don't know if you saw the video from uh, uh, Griffin Matthews, where he says, my experience at ART with Diane Paulus was so horrible. And then at second stage, and he, of course, it's also about the institutions and about everybody he worked with. Yeah. Um, how do you feel? How, how does it feel for you in New York yeah. City? Yeah, I mean, that's a really, 
that's that's a loaded question you know it's um you know one of the things i was i was um talking with someone recently about is you know as an artist of color um you develop such an, an innate skill to code switch to adapt to the room um in order to um fit in in order to um uh to work you know um and for me what what i've had to um reckon with with myself and one of the things that i had to to really question is i think for me unbeknownst to myself i think or or unbeknownst to my to my own not consciously was that how much i was really adapting who i was to accommodate um uh an environment that may not have been or may not have felt um welcoming to who i was as a as a black artist um whether that was changing my accent or being able to manage the fr the fragility of of a white director or 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 institution um and taking the path of least resistance do you know in order to to get a job in order to to pass in order to and it, and it's something that i didn't really um didn't grasp the full extent of it but i think now within in and within the last few months just being holed up and really reevaluating what what's happening i've had to really be honest about that and be honest about um what my own prejudices were in terms of what's good theater and what's not do you know and i and i think um i have had to really um take an honest look at that you know and I, and i think i think that is the question for all of us do you know i think um you know the question is you know to really hold ourselves accountable to hold these theaters and and these and these institutions accountable and also hold ourselves accountable um and for me um i have had a really interesting path in that you know i've always felt that there's something that wasn't quite um i remember i i i had this these rep, these reps that i was i was telling them about a project that i was working on that that that's um uh based in the caribbean and and they just didn't want to they didn't want to hear about it and they actually was like making jokes about it or 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 undermining it in very subtle ways and at the time i didn't necessarily um ascribe it to a race thing per se um but i think it's just this undercurrent or or underlying uh sentiment of what is of value and what isn't you know and i think that is something inherent in 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 um in all of us that comes out in in subtle ways right and i think it's it the, the the what what we're dealing with is is uh there's a there's a discrimination and a marginalization that that is overt and there's like and very clear like george floyd and and there there's so much of it that's that's um that's very subtle or 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 um um not as overt and and sometimes those things for me have has been very difficult to parse and very difficult to pinpoint um um but but now there's a clarity in 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 um in in looking at that and that that's i think emboldened me and has radically changed the way i teach and radically changed the way in which i claim space radically changed the way in which i declare and own who i am and what i'm here to do um that i'm i i think i'm not sure it would have happened as quickly as it did without coronavirus and um black lives matter so for me it's really shaken me and had to really think back really um really really um soberly into my my past um experiences and how much i was um deflecting or ignoring not calling it for what it is because i may not have had at that time the clarity to call it for what it was either um 
And in a way, it's a little heartbreaking to think back. It's like, oh, was that? Oh, that, is that what that was? <laughs> but it, it, you know, I think it, it is. I remember there was um, um, uh, a friend of mine. She was doing a play, um, and she was um, uh, supposed to be a princess. We were doing a Greek play. We were doing Iphigenia, and she was doing. Um, she was playing Iphigenia, and she's a black. Um, actor, brilliant, brilliant actor. And the coach who was working with her um, was telling her, you know, I, I, I don't think you're, you're, you're capturing a princess enough. I don't think you're really, you don't have that princess <laughs> energy. And she's like, I don't know what that means. I'm trying to be a princess. I don't know, am I not, I'm not a princess? You know, as opposed to her owning and inhabiting that character um, in the princess and the way that she brings and interprets that role to be and in her way. And I think there's so much of that sort of bias and that sort of interpretation of, of aesthetic and what um, someone's idea of what a, a certain role or a certain story mean or should mean or how it should look, how it should behave, how it should sound, um, that's colored by our own um, history, our experiences, our, our, our knowledge. Um, that um, and and at and at and at that time you're you you know you may not be savvy enough to call it for what it is, but I think now um, it's so in the open, and I think um, the guy who occupies the White House helps us kind of have that enemy, that target, because he's he's um, you know he's just throwing uh, fuel on the fire. We're able to to really have that focal point that allows us to really see, you know. Um, I remember when when Trump was elected, you know, the world stopped, you know, um, but I also believe, you know, there, there are no accidents in the world. There, there's no accidents in the universe. And I think there's something about the confluence of all of this with him being there is, is really lasering in very, very clearly um, uh, the issues that we need to tackle, you know. And, and I think it's it's a consistent thing, right? I think it's a consistent effort of re-education, unlearning, um, open-mindedness, um, love, um, and the ability and the willingness to be vulnerable, you know, and to trust that if we don't know, it's okay not to know. It's okay. It's okay to ask. It's okay to, to be real. Like in my class, I've, I've just started opening up and just looking at it and just let's just tackle these issues about about anti-blackness and, and, and racism and white fragility. Let's not be afraid to just say it and put it in the room and say, yes, I, am, I have anti-black thoughts and I'm black. I have, I have white fragility because I'm white. Like, just let's just get real. Let's just get honest with each other and, and, and not... Um, and I think if, if we start there, and really at, um, and, and get um, uncomfortable as opposed to not wanting to offend because, well, that person is going to, that person going to give me a job, so I don't want to offend them. <laughs> it's like, you're already, you're already born in a black, you've already been blackballed. So, <laughs> you know, there, there is um, um, Byron Allen, who's this black um, um, executive, um, uh, entertainment mogul, you know, entertainment studios, he, he's, he's like, you know, black people are afraid of not offending because they don't want to get blackballed. He's like, you were born blackballed. You didn't just, you didn't get the memo, you know? So this, this fear of being marginalized or fear, or you're not going to get um, a job if you speak out, that's already happened. That like, you're not jeopardizing something that, that was never yours to begin with. So I think there is no fear, and I think there's there should not be any fear for those who want to see equality, justice, to speak out, to take action, to to and there have been and there are many um, 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 practitioners and, and artists who have been doing that way before Black Lives Matter, right, and, and before all this. So it's not like this is just happening; it's been happening. Um, National Black Theater of Harlem, for instance. Um, who's been at the forefront of this for a long time and, and so many others. So, um, yeah, I think it's just an unveiling of what was, what was there for, for a long time. Yeah. 
you said um, you had to deal with the fragility of white directors or fragility of white institutions. So the burden was on you even to negotiate. So tell us if you could tell a bit about that, that feeling you have that. Yeah, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it, I think it's something that you're, you're taught in many ways. I mean, I come from the Caribbean, a post-colonial um, space that's still reeling and dealing with, with its own identity issues. Right? It's a predominantly black space, East Indian, and very diverse East Indian, African, Syrian, you know, Lebanese, Chinese, a, a lot of different cultures, particularly in Trinidad, but in the wider Caribbean. But you know, we are a space that's dealing with the effects of of post of colonialism and post colonialism, and that's still, yeah, yeah, and it's and yeah, and 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 that still lives in the DNA of of I think that that our community. And I think that has, um, that, that's passed on, you know, and it's passed on in many ways that is, you know, there's colorism in the community, there's anti-blackness in the community, there's, there's this sense that, um, you know, if you go, as we call it, if you're going foreign, if you're going to England or you come to the United States, that these these are the places of milk and honey, and that, and that um, the 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 the, um, the stuff that comes from the ground, from where you're from, isn't enough. Cannot hold a candle to um, uh, the American theater or Shakespeare. Or, I mean, I held those views in, in in many ways. You know, I think it's something that that's kind of in your psyche, something that you're 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 taught. And things that are said um, um, uh, among your friends, family, growing up in in, in that space. So, I, I think the the the, the journey for um, black people, black people in the diaspora, is really a question of um, I think in part is knowing the history and knowing history told by those from your community, right? Not just a general history lesson from a history book, but told from the from the perspective of someone um from your from your um, community um that's telling the full story or 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 another version of the story rather you know um and i think um there isn't a lot of that i mean i i think for me one of the things that i had to also reckon with is understanding the fullness of my experience from the caribbean do you know and and the breadth of of that of that, um, which I feel like I'm pretty well read, you know, but then there, I feel like there's so much more that, that I, 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 I haven't um, learned and I'm continuing to learn and I'm continuing to discover. Um, um, and, and, I, and, I, and, I, and I feel like um, when you're um, reconciling with that and then you bring those those insecurities into a, a space in which you are now the minority, then that that plays out itself in very in very subtle in subtle and maybe not so subtle ways. I think, um, um, and I think it's 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 and I think it's it's natural, it's normal, right? In the same way, I, like I had a friend, he's a a good friend of mine, Jan. He's a German guy, and he 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 was uh, he would come to Trinidad, and we met in Trinidad. And he would tell me, like, yeah, Paul, I would go to, uh, uh, he's in business, I would go to a, um, a conference room um, and have a meeting. And if he stands up and he says something, they would listen to him over the other local businessmen because he's a white man from Europe coming into the space. So there is this, this, um, this, this, this legacy of, of post-colonialism and, and, and this sense of, of white supremacy and, and, and that exists even within um these spaces do you know and i think what's happening now is this is this this unveiling this uh, this this awareness um of artists of color of white artists uh, that are acknowledging that that are recognizing that and calling it out for what it is and 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 now we're we're in uh, in that process of dismantling that and interrogating that and i i i, I and i feel it's it, there's no um I don't think there, there's any there's any um, <clears throat> um, value in like the, the the hate around that. 
it's just it is what it is right it's it just is mm -hmm. so if, if we just acknowledge it for what it is because it's it, it's and we could address it in a real way and in an honest way and then really make the steps to dismantle that and see how can we truly find equity in in every space and and find value in that um and if we if we're if we're moving towards that i think that's 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 great and, and the theater and the arts are always at the forefront of of doing that for the most part and i think a lot of that dismantling is, is there's just a lot of fear and ignorance do you know and i think in terms of white um some of my white colleagues um you know i think sometimes it's, it's just not just never having to just have to deal with that <laughs> do you know just just not literally not knowing that that happens to people like literally not knowing and i had a a a a, a a conversation with a friend of mine and we were talking about some of this police brutality thing and and then an experience that a black colleague of ours posted on facebook and he was and he was started saying well i don't think that's necessarily what that means i was like well that's not your experience of that and you can't speak to someone's experience of a situation that's their experience and i think part of the process for us for all of us is to listen and to hear the experiences of others and just acknowledge that. Because I think sometimes we get into a, no, that's not a race thing or that's not what that was, but that's what they interpreted and that's how they felt. And I think the more we're able to hear and to acknowledge what the, the experiences people are bringing into a room, then we have a, a place of, 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 of conversation and departure. Um, so for me, it's it's been this, this um this 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 return in many ways to my own cultural roots this return to this um um and centering that and centering that that um that 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 interrogation that interest that that curiosity in 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 in, in centering the, the the caribbean experience in, in the narratives in which i want to tell that i think pre maybe a, some 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 years ago it may not have been that that is something well i i do caribbean theater but i need to get on this hollywood train <laughs> i need to do this this tv series thing that whatever whatever which is great and of course but at the same time it's yes but this also needs centering this also needs voice this also needs a steward and 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 um and that has that has value that's of service to a to a wider humanity and and who else is going to do it so i think it's been a lot of that and i think as <clears throat> as, as, as artists of color i feel like that's always I don't know, for me that's been something of always navigating how much of myself can i bring is, is there space is there a market for caribbean or caribbean movie <laughs> Do you know, and I, and I think what I have learned, the more you step into that and you offer that with, with authenticity, with love, with, 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 uh, with rigor, um, the good stuff always rises, right? The good stuff always rises to the top. And I think um, I, I, I believe in that and, and, um, and want to continue in that, in that mm. path. So in a way, yeah, I, I, I hear you, it's hard. Even I, for me, and I'll think I'm honest, I, may, I do not know how it felt, feels for you, you know, to yeah. be in the room, I do not know. And your colleagues don't know. Also your students or white students do not know. And uh, how, what does one, how does one deal with that? You know, yeah. how do one communicate experiences and you can. It's like, you know, you have children, but you have, you've been a child, you, uh, have seen movies about kids. You read books about kids. Your friends have kids. But when you have a child, it's different. <laughs> yes. If you yes. realize it, it's so you know. As someone said, you can also have a tattoo on your face. It's the same commitment. It's something so radically different from everything you know. And the question is, how do we bridge that? And yeah. Have you ever been asked to uh, do like the Shakespeare with the British accent uh, and uh, in acting? And how how does that make you feel? Yeah. I mean, I I think. I've, I've always wrestled with that because you've seen, again, it's all about representation. It's all about centering and positioning. You know, when you, when you see, um, you know, 
these great actors and they're, you know, they're all white and they're all speaking a certain way. You start to think, well, that's how I got to sound, you know, or, or you feel like you can see the breakdown. I want, they want this accent or that accent. And then you feel like you're, you know, if I bring, were to bring myself, would that be enough? You know, but I, again, it comes back. Well, ultimately, this is this is the, the the path of the artist, right? It's you. The only thing that you can bring is who you are. Ultimately, yes, okay. You, you, it, 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 and what? And as we say in Trinidad, what's for you is for you. Do you know? And I think that the, all of that breeds this idea of of fear. This idea, and, and and I'll say this. I'll say this to you, Frank. That I have also been marginalized in. The black community as well, the black American community as well. You know, there is, and you know, there is this black elite, this black bourgeois scene that I've been told, yes, he's great, but he needs to get rid of the plantains and black and rice and peas. You know, like and this is among the the black um, community, right? Mm -hmm. So, so it's it's such a layered thing. It's 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 on all and so many layers we. We bring our prejudices, we bring our ideas, and, and, and vice versa. You have African and, Afri and Caribbean Americans like, oh, no, you're not, have a distancing from African Americans, you know? So there is such a layered sense of, of, what, of racism, anti-blackness, of white supremacy. It, it affects all of us in, such a, in, such a, in so many ways where I feel like now, you know, probably if I'd done that audition in my my Caribbean way, that might have been the very thing that made me stand up, and the very thing mm -hmm. that the director, of the casting director, was like, "That's interesting. That's not how I perceived a Mercutio being." As a because you can't, I can't, I'm not going to replace a born and bred Brooklyn American to do their thing. You know what I mean? Or British, you know? Uh, yeah, or British to do <clears throat> what they do. <clears throat> yeah, you know? I know. Yeah, even American actors get so upset when the Royal Shakespeare Company comes, everybody goes crazy, say this is the real Shakespeare because they are British, you know? Right. Even so to say, maybe it's part of a colonial project, you know, this Shakespeare, this is the best, and you have to try to get it. You will never be as close, but you can try. And try. You know, they yeah. try to get a pat on the shoulder, and it says, no, the theater should at least be, should be exactly the opposite, you know? As, as you said, the prince's role, the guy who was the coach, had something in his mind already. So this is not well, what art should be like. Yes. Don't do what's already there. Like Eugenio Barba, who was us yesterday. Who yes, was, yes, I watched impossible. a little bit of that. Yeah, you don't do what's already been done. It's, you know, you don't yeah. replicate, you don't do karaoke. And um, so, and, but it's so, it's so hard uh, to, uh, yeah. to, to really live it. And you, you are, you're lucky and you're, good to, in your field but how hard is it for someone you know who maybe missed the one teacher or missed the one chance just was at that audition it didn't work out and and didn't didn't yeah. come in so what, yeah no yeah i i yeah no i i agree with you it's it's um it's really a courageous act i i think it's a courageous act for anybody to, to stand in themselves stand in their own skin and really and that's the great artists do that right the great ones really have the courage to to do that and i think that's really the task at hand now more than ever i think now mm -hmm. it's in many ways there is this 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 wave of 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 a collective push forward for us all to stand in ourselves and to be on honest and vulnerable and and to and to rep who we are um and i think that's 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 a great thing you know i mean there's this conversation that's been having about what is a dangerous the, um, theatrical space like what is what is a dangerous space safe or dangerous and you know in, in the theater and and you know there is this sense everything is pc everything is sanitized you can't say this you can't say that you can't do this you can't do that you know and, and that's what a conversation that we've been um i've been having in, in a lot of my classrooms like what is the day like we could have respect for each other but until we're able to really put the thing in front of us and for all of us to dig in and to unpack it from where we come from and not worry if we're going to offend and this and that the other person but really if we trust each other and we trust the space could, could hold us um the dangerous space is a space where we can really speak freely and really interrogate and understand what happens there stays there um, but we can really work 
Um, and, and we've been doing that um, recently in some of my classes and bringing in a lot of the conversation we're having right now. And, and people are, are, are really short sharing um, point of views that, you know, I don't know they would have shared that um, in mm -hmm. the, the diverse room that is the, those, those, those classrooms. Because we all are, we're all siloed into our communities that reflect our own values and point of views. Um, but then when we're in this the theatrical space, it allows us to really get in and to really hear things that we ordinarily mm -hmm. wouldn't. And, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm excited to get back to that. That's get back great. to get back to those what is the dangerous space and where is the space that's free of of these of these externalized things Let, let's be let's be let's let's be a non pc and let's investigate what that is let's 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 categorize the space first to be a safe space let's acknowledge that let's 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 consecrate that space but then let's get dirty let's get messy and see what emerges from that um so that's been kind of mm. what, what I've been really getting back to, which ironically was the thing that drove me to the theater to begin with, the beginning. was the thing that brought me here. That's cool. um, so, who inspired you? Who do, in your time as in theater making or filming, who, who, who inspires you? Who are your, yeah, I are mean, your mentors? Who, I mean, for me right now, um, again, that, that artist from Trinidad, uh, Peter Minchel, um, brilliant, brilliant. Um, uh, carnival maker, theater maker. Um, I'm also rediscovering um, James Baldwin and his writing. Um, I'm kind of going all over, not just theater. No, but, no, no, that's good. Yeah, um, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. There, there is a writer, an academic right now that I'm just in love with in his work. His name is Ibram X. Kendi, and he has a book that I'm reading called Stamp from the Beginning that talks about anti-racist thoughts and, and anti-racist um and racist ideas and and anti-racism and, and and the chronicling of that over american history and that's something i've been devouring of the last few few um few days um do you know yeah i mean I've, I've i've been i've been i've been just been reading a lot so those are some of the things that i've been kind of consuming um right now i mean i love um, Ivo van Hova, like I love, mm -hmm. I love his work. You know, I mm -hmm. love, I love his his mind. I love the stuff that he's he's creating. Um, there's a there's a theater artist that you, you know you may you may hear of her, and she's actually a Caribbean. She's from Barbados. Her name is um, Charlotte Rapid, and she is um, a theater maker in New York, um, mm -hmm. who is wildly inspiring and. And her work is is inspiring to me as a Caribbean, a fellow Caribbean um, theater maker. Um, yeah, those are some of the people that are that are coming to mind at the at, at the moment. Fantastic! We're coming closer to the end of the talk, and we always ask um, 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 at the uh, what do you um, what do you say to young uh, young artists and uh, or people, our listeners, in the moment? What, we should focus on and um, and so what is the uh, uh, idea? I know to, we talked about the Royal Shakespeare Company. It's great what they're doing because that's their thing. It's authentic. But uh, theater is a house. It has many rooms. And Hansi Schlemmer said, "They have that room. You have to find your own room." So um, so uh, just to uh, also um, and, and make that make that clear. But wh what do you think is of importance for us in general, but also for artists? Yeah, I think, I think it's really this question of finding your voice and really being still and really reconnecting into the thing that, that really moves you. And I think that, that take, that's an act of courage to really find the, the thing that moves you most and, and never to forget that and to hold on to that. Hold on to that spark, that, that, that questioning whether it's a, an idea, a concept, an experience, something that moves you to create, you know, because it is a spiritual act. It is um, a co-creation with the higher self. And what is that? What is that calling to 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 create? And I think even if that thing may not seem in fashion or in vogue, um, I think that is the thing to keep. That's the guiding light. That's the north star. That 
that was going to keep you engaged, that's going to keep you grounded, that's going to fill the well when 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 things get tough. So that's what I would say. Find that light, find that that voice that's in communion with that higher self, and stay true to that. Mm, that's uh, that's important advice and and great advice. And you you are living that. You know that you work in New York, but you keep your roots uh, to the to the Caribbean. Uh, yeah. Um, to Trinidad and to uh, you know, so also now you are a model uh, to 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 younger artists there because you do it, they others can do it, and it's a yeah. model for what can be done. And you are part of the great diversity of New York City. In New York, yeah, with all the complication, it is a great city. Yes, it is. Has a history of complication, of riots, of uh, a depression time, and uh, anyway, it always came back, and this city will come back because yeah, it's a brilliant. A place to be and you're part of it you're part of the diversity and you make it uh, what it is and we all have to see that Thank clearer you, and i think what is true now in these discussions you know yeah with a, you have more agency we all will listen better but we learned that i think that we really have to listen to you so really thank you for sharing also yeah. being so open and honest and uh, and thank we you. continue our um our series tomorrow we have Eva Yatsi from uh, syria who is a uh, a poet, a playwright, she was at the World Court and also a documentary filmmaker to hear how does it feel for someone like her to be out of her country, uh, being in Berlin and, uh, and uh, making theater. And she was, goes back and forth also with documentaries. Next week, we have a wonderful, I think, also lineup. We have Kimi uh, Elisanmi with Ebony Noel Golden. And then we have Jaten. Netzerai from, uh, from Kosovo, the National Theater of Kosovo has been destroyed by real estate people, a very significant place. And he's talking with Jena Karabunari from Romania uh, about that. And uh, Iman Aoun, uh, Iman Ashtar from uh, Palestine will talk about uh, her, her work, her theater. Um, and um, from Jamaica, we will have uh, Sakina Dia and Ivoni Walters to talk about their work in, in Jamaica. So um, we are continuing our, uh, our, our travels around the world. And again, um, thank you for being with us, taking your time. Thanks for our listeners. It is important that we hear them. It's important uh, for Paul to know that people are listening to him and what he has to say is also, it is really important for us. And what he says is, is of significance. It's about us. We have to make an authentic change and go with it. What we hear from all the talks is that theater we put it out there, but what's important is the audience, the audience to come, to be there, and that the audience actually creates the sense and makes connections. And that's also what theater is about, that uh, the reading of the literature, the reading of the plays, the connections we make, the actions we take because of it is of significance. Thanks to HowlRound uh, for hosting us, VJ, Thea, Thea, who gets up every morning at nine o'clock, before nine in Los Angeles, <laughs> And uh, I'm not sure if Halron thought we would do it so long. So really great support they give us. And of course, the Siegel team, Andy and Sun Young. So thank you. And Paul, good yeah. luck. And I know thank you, have you to go so much. This, has been, this has been great. Thank you so much for this. I, 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 it's been a pleasure. Thank you. And all the best. And we can't wait to see your film and to see your theater work. And again, thanks for helping us out when you came to direct at the Siegel. It was a great, a great. Oh, event. my pleasure. Thank you okay. for having me. Bye bye, Paul.